Trevor Ian Grant, or TIG as he's known in the forums, has created a useful script that allows you to generate a number of traditional roof forms. It's simply called roof.rb, and I've already loaded it. It's available on the plugins menu. There are two different ways to generate these roofs. One is from a selected face, and the other is by picking three points. I'll start by creating a gable ended roof, which requires three points. I'll click here, here, and here. We're presented with this dialog box where we can enter a roof slope in degrees or in a rise to run ratio. You can set the different sizes of fascia and soffit, different types, and so on. You can set the layer and materials if you choose yes down here. I'll click OK. And then we're presented with this secondary dialog box where we can select different material names for these different elements. There's a single layer that's generated where the roof can reside. I'll click OK. And there we have it. The roof is hollow underneath, and it's already subdivided into different areas which have materials assigned. You can see these by pressing B to open the Paint Bucket tool. Make sure you go to Colors in Model, and you can see that there are three materials here for the roof surface, the roof fascia, and the soffit. You can see this a little more clearly on the model by double clicking on a particular material to open it for editing, and then you can choose a different color where you can see that a little better. So that's the soffit material. All in all, a very useful script. Let me just delete this and create some of the other roof types. I'll make a pyramidal roof in the same fashion. The other roof types require a face selection. Go ahead and draw in a face on top of the walls and make sure that it's facing upward. Here I need to reverse the face. Then I'll choose roof, hip roof. Again, we have this choice of slope. I'm going to set it as 6 in 12. And I don't need to set the layer this time. I'll choose no. And that way we'll only have this one dialog box to deal with. OK. And there's the hip roof. This ridge length depends upon the proportions of your walls. The roof script also comes with a measurement tool called Get Slope of Selected Face. To see how this works, let me just delete that roof and go ahead and draw a rectangle off to the side. I'll move this edge up in the blue direction to some steep slope. Then I'll go ahead and reverse the face so it's facing outward. And with the face selected, I'll choose Roof, Get Slope from Selected Face. It tells us right here, both in angular degrees and in terms of rise to run, what this particular slope would be. It's about 53 degrees. So if we want to match that in a roof, we can do it. I'll select this face and go to Mansard Roof, which has two slopes. I'll say it's 53 degrees for the lower slope, and I'll set the upper slope to be 4 and 12. So there we have it, a double pitched roof, a very useful time-saving script from TIG. To create a flight of steps manually, you can use the Divide tool to divide the overall run and overall rise into a discrete number of steps. So for example, let me draw a line from the origin point over in this direction. Let's say it's 14 feet in length. That will represent the overall run of our flight of steps. And then I'll draw another line up in the blue direction, 9 feet in height. So I just need to divide these two lines into a number of segments to determine the individual step, rise, and run. Right-click on the edge and choose Divide. And then as you move the cursor, you'll see more and more red dots appear. And if you hold the mouse still, you'll see a tooltip which gives you the actual length. So a good rule of thumb for a step is 7.11. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. I'll click right there to create 15 segments. And then I'll do this one in the height dimension. So we should be shooting for something close to 7 inches. There we go. Now that we've subdivided the overall rise and run into a discrete number of segments, we can go ahead and sketch in an individual step. Use the line tool and draw in the width. Here I'll make it 3 feet wide. 
I'll move the cursor in the red direction, hold down the Shift key to lock that inference, and reference this first endpoint. And then complete the figure to create the plan of the first step. Use the Push-Pull tool to pull the surface up in the blue direction. And reference this endpoint over here to create your prototype for your stair. Triple-click to select all connected edges and faces. Press G to create a component and call that component Step. Use the Move tool with the Option key to create a copy of this step from this point to the opposite corner. And then type in a number like 14x to create a number of copies. And here we have the overall flight of steps. We can go ahead and alter an individual component. Here I'll orbit underneath and push-pull this up to make all of the treads a little bit smaller. Zoom in. I'll just make that a little bit smaller, like that, so we have some space in between the individual treads. So this remains a very flexible stair because any changes you make to an individual step affect all of them. What if you want a solid run of steps or a curved stair? How can you create that? Well, you can use the proportions that you've calculated here to create a follow me path. Here I'll sketch a line up in the blue direction and another line over in the red direction. Just for clarity, let me get rid of all of these steps. I'm going to select them all and hide them for now. We can get rid of these paths as well. So now we have the individual rise and the individual run. I'll select both of those, copy them over 14 times in this case, we need a face, so I'll go ahead and sketch in a line down here in the red direction, and then I'll connect the dots to create a face. And then if we don't want this stair to fill in this whole volume here, we can go ahead and cut off part of it like this, and then just erase these edges out here. Now we can go ahead and create either a straight path for the stair, or a curved path using an arc, and then we pre-select the path, press F, and click on the face to create the stair. Undo. Otherwise, we can pre-select the curved path, press F, and click on the face to create a curved stair. There are a number of Ruby scripts which greatly help in the creation of stairs and railings. Let's just go through them. I have them listed as extensions. We'll just start with the stair. The script was written by Tim Track. And it shows up on the plugins menu, just called stair. Now this prompts you to set all these parameters here. And it's actually giving me approximate values because the script was written with metric units in mind. I'll just go ahead and click OK here, and then the stair is created. You're then prompted to set in the railing properties, and I'll just click OK again, and we create these objects. Now these are separate groups, so if you don't want this glass piece here, you can just delete it. And likewise with the railings. So it's a useful script. It separates the treads and risers into separate pieces, as you can appreciate here. Now if you want, you can go ahead and edit the Ruby script. Up here at the top of the script, there's an area that says values, and these are given in metric units. So if you're using feet and inches, you can change these numbers, which correspond with the prompts given above. There's another author who's created a script for generating straight flights of steps, and it's called Stair Maker. It's written by C. Hebert. And as is typical of Ruby scripts, this one is in a different menu. Each author does things a bit differently. This one's here at the bottom. And you can create three different types of straight stairs based on their materials. A concrete stair. Steel. Is the same geometry, but it just gives you the treads. And then finally, wood gives you the treads and the risers. So it's a good way of automating the sort of tedious process of creating a flight of steps. When you want to have more options for the form of your stair, you can use the Stair Concrete script by Tim Track. And Tim likes to place his scripts here on the Plugins menu, so this shows up as Stair Concrete. 
And we can create, of course, the straight flight like this. It comes with a couple of railings. Or we can create the scissor stair, which gives us a choice of where we want the landing. Here we can have it up one floor or down one floor. I'll just say OK, and we'll move it up to the top. And finally, there's the left and right versions, which are like this. There's one other common type of stair that there is a script for, but it's a little bit more involved because the geometry is just that much more challenging, and that is a spiral stair. So to create a spiral stair, you need to start by sketching in two curves that represent the stringers of that stair. To do this, we can use Draw Helix, which is a script I've demoed before, written by Peter Brown. I'll load that. We'll go ahead and draw the helix representing the inner portion of the spiral stair. In this case, I want the start and end radii to match, and I want those to be rather small, so let's just say that they're 12 inches. The pitch is actually the overall height of the helix, so in this case I'll say it's 9 feet. The number of rotations will just be 1, and I'll go ahead and create that. Next we need to create the other curve, representing the other side of the stair. Here the start and end radii will be 4 feet. The pitch will be again 9 feet high with one rotation. There we have the two curves that we need to represent this stair. Thinking ahead, I know I'm going to need this curve to represent the handrail. So I'm just going to copy that up in the blue direction, the height of the handrail. I'll just call it 42 inches. I'm just going to hide that for now. We'll come back to it later. Now, the Helix script creates grouped polylines, and we need to actually go ahead and explode those groups in order to use them with the spiral stair script. So now we're left with two separate polylines representing the outer edges of our stair. So now I'll go ahead and load the spiral stair script. It's written by Rick Wilson. Then I'll go ahead and select both curves and choose Plugins Spiral Stair to create the steps. I'll unhide that helix that I copied up, go ahead and explode it, and this will be the path for our handrail. To create a handrail very quickly, you can use this script, which is called Pipe Along Path, written by TIG. All you need to do is pre select the path and choose Pipe Along Path. We'll just set our units here, and then the pipe can be hollow, so there can be separate inside and outside diameters. In inches, let's say the outside diameter is 1.5 and the inside is 1. I'll create 32 segments in the circle, and click OK, and there's the handrail. I'll zoom in close up here on the end of the handrail just to show you that it's actually hollow. So if we want that to be solid, all we have to do is undo and create the inside diameter with a value of zero. So there you have it. Quite a few scripts that help you automate the process of creating stairs.